Hello basketball coaches and basketball players, my name is Alan from Al's Basketball Training and today I'm going to talk to you about some read and react basketball drills. Now in my opinion, read and react basketball drills are very important because this is the type of drill that's going to help your players on the court reading the defense to know where they should cut and how they should cut. So let's get down to the clipboard and I'll show you some of these drills that you can run with your basketball team. Okay, so we're going to have two lines of players in this first drill and pretty much every single one of these drills is going to only have two lines of players and we're going to have a coach. Now you can have a volunteer as a coach, you can have your assistant coach, you can have whatever, it doesn't matter, it just has to be a person. And then from there, basically in this first drill, this player is going to decide what to do depending on what this coach or this person is doing. So, what I mean by that is if this player or this person is playing deep, close to the baseline, cutting off any baseline cuts, what has to happen is player 5 needs to pop out to the free throw line extended and he's going to jack up that shot. Meanwhile, he's going to follow his shot. Player 1 is going to go in the back of that line. He is going to now pass that ball to the next person in line and in case he misses, you can already have a second ball set up and he can pass to the next person in line who doesn't already have a basketball. Now, if this coach or this person was playing a bit higher, cutting off anything that's going up high, what can happen now is player 3 has to recognize that and player 3 now needs to cut baseline so that now player 1 can pass, lead pass him the ball for that layup. And at this time, you're going to be running this drill back and forth, on and on. You're going to then switch sides to the other side of the court. That way they're getting left-handed and right-handed layups done. And also you know, getting ready and used to catching the ball on the left side and shooting. And then catching the ball on the right side and shooting. And you're going to be running this through for probably 5 or 6 minutes on each side. Then you can head on to this next drill. Now in this next drill, we're going to have again our coach or just a person, volunteer, whatever in the low post. And the first player, person from this line, he's going to be posting up that player. Meanwhile, what's going to happen is player 4 is going to be cutting baseline and we're going to be having player 1, he's going to be popping up towards the high post. Or what can happen is he can pop towards the center of the key. One of those two different options. Meanwhile, when player 4 is cutting, that's going to draw that player in. This is basically simulating the zone defense when you're cutting baseline and you already have a post player who's popping out. What's going to happen now? Player 4 is going to pass to player 1 and he's going to be going in for that mid-range shot. Now, what we'd like to see is maybe only 2 or 3 people in each line and running the exact same thing on the other end of the court. That way we don't have any players who are bored. We can run this through quickly and we can run this drill for maybe 3, 4 or 5 minutes. And whatever we do on this side, we also do on this side as well. Once that person from this line finishes, what's going to happen is if you don't have that many players, let's say you only have 3 or 4 players total per net, then instead of him going to the back of this line, what he can do is now post up. Player 1 gets his rebound, passes to the next person in line, and we're going to do the exact same thing through. Or, if there is two lines, then what's going to happen is what we will have is now that person goes in the back of that line. Once this player is finished, actually he's the shooter, whoops. Once that player is finished, he's going to go in the back of that line. Once this player is finished, he's going to be going in the back of this line. Player 2 is going to then pop out and post up. And we're going to run this through. So if you have 4 or 5 people per net, then you would do one line. If you, only, if you have 10 players, then you would want to do two lines. But personally, I prefer having one line and having multiple coaches doing the exact same drill on different nets. Now this next drill is a great drill to run if you run a lot of pass and cut options. Basically what we're going to have here is two lines and the player who has the ball to start is going to pass to the first player in the next line and then from there he's going to cut towards the rim. Now depending on how the coach is going to be guarding him, he can cut in front of the coach or behind the coach. So let me explain to you what I mean by this. So when player 3 passes to player 3 red, if this coach, if he's playing up tight on player 3, we want player 3 to cut in front. It's a lot quicker of a move. However, if this coach 
slides over to play essentially help defense or one man off defense we want player three to be cutting down the middle of the key and this is going to be a lob pass or a bounce pass or even a chest pass to player three for that layup or dunk if this player can dunk if you have one or two players on your team who can dunk make sure that you tell the players in this line to be sending up that lob pass the reason is is obviously it's a great workout for that player who can dunk but also it's getting you ready Te you're teaching your players how to lob up that ball perfectly in case you need to use that in a game in real life the reason why I always like to teach my players how to lob the ball up is if we only have one or two seconds left and we don't have the amount of time to have that player in the post land and go back up, we're better off with a lob. Now in this next play or drill I should say, we're going to have this line starting with the ball and the first player is going to pass to the first player in this line. Now player three is going to try and cut towards the rim. If he's quicker than the coach. And the coach, even if the coach is quicker, he can let this player go every once in a while. He can cut towards the rim, and this can be a nice, easy layup. Other times, we want the coach to stop this player from being able to get through, and we want player three to pop back up for that shot. Now, personally, I would split my team in half and have the other half running on the other side of the court because there's going to be a lot of players doing nothing for a few seconds, and I like to have my players running at all times. So I only like to have maybe two or three players in each line so we can get rid of these guys. And essentially, this is what it would look like. So we would have our players at the point. We would have these players here. Player 3 would pass to player 5. And depending on what the coach is doing, if he's fighting player 3, not allowing him to get through, we want player 3 to pop back out so that he can receive that ball and take that shot. Now... You can even stack this drill, and this is the part that I really like. Once player 5 passes to player 3, we want player th 5 it's to nine cut. You get 9 o'clock according to my computer, you probably heard that. And player 5 is going to cut towards the rim. Now at this time, once player 5 is cutting towards the rim, depending on what the coach is doing, if the coach is coming up and playing player 3 tight, player 3 can pass to player 5 for the layup, or if the coach is playing player 5, we want player 3 to take that shot, and we want player 5 to try and beat that, that coach on that rebound. So even though the coach might be boxing out, we want player 5 to now fight around and try and get that rebound. Now I hope that these read and react basketball drills help with your team. Now if you are a coach that is not as mobile as uh, what would be needed for this these drills, you can pull in other players from maybe younger teams, older teams to be able to defend or and that would be great volunteer work if your if your school board needs volunteers, this would be fantastic. We can call them the manager for the team. But uh, otherwise, you can use parents or anything you really would like. Anything that moves with two legs. I hope that you have enjoyed today's video. If you have, hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys again tomorrow for another twice a day basketball video and another daily basketball video coming up this afternoon.